Hey everybody. Today we're talking about two machines, the MacBook Air M1 and the MacBook Air M2. And this includes um, all the different variants and all the different combinations of configurations. By the way, this video is more geared towards people that don't already have a MacBook and are just looking to get into their first one. So I think there's a lot of confusion out there for people that are trying to decide which MacBook Air they should be getting. Either the brand new MacBook Air M2 or one that's a couple years old. Well, not literally, but the design is a couple years old, the M1. And that's not normally a choice that you have to make or not normally even a problem because one that's a couple years old, well, well, it's usually outdated and old and the new one is usually way way better but that's not the case this time around the weird thing is that both the m1 and the m2 macbook airs are available from the apple store at the same time right now and that just goes to show you that apple will place these two as different products in the product ladder considers them to be different. You can either think of it as like uh, two different levels of MacBook Pro or based on some of the testing that I've been doing with the upgraded model, uh, you can think of it maybe as um, MacBook Pro Mini. All right, forget I said that. That's that's not confusing at all. Now, obviously the prices between these are going to range from slightly different to hugely different depending on the configuration that you get. And for a second, let's talk about it in general terms. Is generally speaking, the new MacBook Air an upgrade to the M1? And the answer is yes, it is an upgrade. And for upgrades, we have to pay a little bit extra, don't we? So it's not so ridiculous. The new product is higher priced than the existing product that's slightly inferior. And maybe that's why Apple kept the M1s around to be in the Apple Store, just to justify the new price. Anyway, the question on our minds is, is the superior upgrade worth it over the M1? And worth it itself is a term that's used to describe many different people. Is it worth it to you? Maybe. Is this feature or that feature worth it to that person? Maybe not. Maybe it's super worth it to this other person. It's different for everybody. So before we go into all the details, as I mentioned, this video is for people that are newcomers to the entry level MacBook scene. I've got another video coming out that describes in detail what you'd be getting into if you already have a MacBook Air and you're looking at the M2 as a possible upgrade, or if you already have an older MacBook Pro, you're also looking at the MacBook Air. So be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that. All right, let's get into the details now. Number one, you don't use a lot of IO. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say you already have some laptop and not a MacBook, but maybe you're using a Windows laptop or a Linux laptop or a Chromebook that you travel with and you don't use a lot of outboard gear. Now, one of the biggest benefits of the new MacBook Air design, and this is the biggest benefit to me personally, is that it has these two Thunderbolt ports, but the old one also had two Thunderbolt ports, right? The older one's on top, the newer one's on the bottom. What the newer one has is this MagSafe connection for power. How do you charge the old one? Well, you have to use up one of your Thunderbolt ports to do that. But if you are like me and you have a lot of things plugged into here, you're gonna feel running out of those very quickly. So having that extra MagSafe port for charging leaves two ports free for doing whatever else you need. Now, if you don't care about that, if you don't need that IO, then this doesn't matter to you. You'll be fine with the M1. The next thing is the webcam. The new MacBook Air has a 1080p webcam, full HD, whereas the old one had a 720 webcam. So are you going to be sitting in meetings where you need to look extra crisp? <laughs> are you having FaceTime calls where you need to show all the details? Is the new one noticeably better? Yes, it is better. Um, but do you care about that? If that doesn't matter to you, then the upgrade is not going to be worth it to you. All right, moving on to the next thing. Oh, that coffee is terrible today. Speakers. This is one of those other things that are nice to have. The speakers on the new machine are really nice. I mean, they are uh, very flat, which means they're true sounding. The basses and the trebles are very well balanced. Whereas on the older MacBook Air, the mid ranges are really awkwardly sticking out. If, if you're doing music stuff, you'd notice that right away. But if you're doing music stuff, you're going to have a nice pair of headphones or a nice pair of speakers. You're not going to be listening to it anyway. Well, you could be. And if especially if you're sensitive to to that kind of stuff, you probably will notice the difference. But if all you're using the audio for is doing voice calls, or Zoom meetings, you probably will not notice that. Now, the next thing, the M2 MacBook Airs are supposed to have a slightly bigger battery with slightly more capacity. And on paper, there is a difference, but 
Um, I've tested this out and actually did a live stream the other day where I had the MacBook Air 1, M1 and M2, and I ran the same builds, the same software on them, doing live streaming from them at the same time, and the M1 outlasted the M2. So in practice, is it really that much more battery? I wouldn't count on it. Now the M1 already has a ridiculously long lasting battery. If you're looking at improving that battery, you're looking in the wrong place, or at least you're maybe a couple years early. The M1's battery is going to last you probably all day, of work and uh, the M2 is not going to save you whatever extra few minutes that you're going to get from it. The next benefit that you might be missing out on is the M2 has a slightly larger screen and uh, the M1 MacBook Air, it says it's a 13.3 inch display, 2560 by 1600. And if we check the M2 before the latest updates to the OS, it used to say 14 inches and I was pretty excited, 14 inches, wow. But now it's just 13.6, they fixed it. It's uh, 2560 by by 1664. So you're looking at 64 extra pixels in height, but that height is actually taken up by the top bar. It's not gonna give you that much extra real estate. Don't look forward to that. Now, it is supposed to be also a little bit brighter, but if you're using the machine for coding and if you're working in dark mode especially, you're probably not even gonna notice a difference. Here they are side by side with their brightness at the fullest. As you can see, it doesn't make much difference. And this is what it looks like looking at code. Uh, as you can see, it's not that much difference, but uh, we do have 47 lines of code fit into the M2 as opposed to 46 lines of code in VS Code. Maybe you do get one extra line of code in, not a big deal. Now, what is going to be noticeable and this is uh, another really big one. The most upgraded model you can get in an M1 is a 16 gigabyte model, whereas the M2 MacBook Air will allow you 24 gigabytes. And that is huge. I've tested the two MacBook Airs. I have the eight gigabyte version and the 24 gigabyte version. I've tested them against each other, as well as the MacBook Pro the base model with 16 gigs and 24 gigabytes goes a long way. Now, that doesn't mean that you're gonna need that. Every developer is doing different things. So you could develop on a Raspberry Pi and a Chromebook. You might not even need eight gigabytes for what you're doing. If you're writing code, all you're doing is doing text files and you're uploading your software to be built in the cloud, you don't care about that. But it's about the tool chain and the frameworks that you wanna have installed in your machine and running at the same time. If your stack requires a lot of memory, you're gonna start having problems at eight gigabytes. If you need more, you might start having problems at 16 gigabytes. So 24 is really good to have. And that's something you can only get with the M2 MacBook Airs, not the M1s. Now, if you're not sure where on that spectrum you fall into as a developer, or maybe you're just starting out in development. I've got a video coming up on that very soon, breaking down what developer roles and MacBook is more suitable for them. So hopefully that'll be helpful to you. Uh, that's an update to the video I had last year. Now we have new machines to compare. Now, speaking of internal specs, the old MacBook Airs came in seven core GPU varieties and eight core GPU varieties. You can't get the sevens anymore. So it's eight maximum, whereas the new MacBook Airs go up to 10 10 cores of GPU. Are they useful? Uh, they could be, especially if you're plugging in a second monitor. As far as machine learning tasks, if you're thinking about you're gonna be using them for machine learning, yeah, you can. Is the extra two cores gonna give you any performance benefit? Probably not. If you wanna do serious machine learning stuff, you wanna get a separate dedicated machine with a nice Nvidia card or whatever card is available during the time you're watching this video. But just to give you an example, my daily driver is the M1 Max MacBook Pro with 64 gigs of RAM and it also has a ridiculous number of GPUs in there. I think 32. I also have a 48 core GPU machine over here, the Mac Studio, and I don't use either one of them for machine learning stuff because I use a dedicated Linux machine for that. The optimizations that you get with CUDA packages is just way better right now at this time than anything available on the Mac side. Now that's changing and uh, the Mac side is being developed, but it's not quite there yet. So the extra two little cores you're going to get I don't think that's gonna make a big difference. So definitely don't look there for an upgrade. Now, of course, one of the biggest differences is the price range, right? So I've had the M1 MacBook Air 16 gigabyte variety for two years now, and it still runs incredibly well. It's a really good buy. And this was a $1,200 machine for 999 bucks, just under a thousand. You can get the base model M1 MacBook Air. And even that is still a really good machine, especially because you can buy it uh, for 850 bucks right now. 
now is that's how much I paid for mine. I'll leave a link to the one I found down below in case you want to check that out. And if I find the 16 gigabyte model that's also on sale, I'll leave a link to that as well. Now for the M2, the base model doesn't even start until $1,200. And that's why I think that the base model, if that's a machine that you're considering, don't. Unless you find any of the things I mentioned in this video so compelling that you must have it, that base model is probably not worth it. Now what is worth it, MagSafe, 24 gigs of RAM, but then you're looking looking at <laughs> a lot more money. You're looking at MacBook Pro price territory at that point, and it's gonna be a good performing machine that's gonna be absolutely silent. It might be worth it to you to get that one, but if you don't need that RAM boost and you don't care about IO, I think the 16 gigabyte MacBook Air M1 is actually a really nice sweet spot machine and still really good to this day. So overall, yes, the M2 MacBook Air has a much better design, a better display, slightly better performance, but if you're price conscious and you don't care about all the things I mentioned in this video, all the different uh, features and benefits that you get with the M2, you don't mind the outdated design and the slight dip in performance, then the M1 is the way to go. Now I would suggest only considering the M2 MacBook Air if you're going to be upgrading and it's not the base model. So that covers it for this more general video. The software development specific video is on the way. I wanna take this moment to thank the members of the channel. The memberships have been up since uh, about six months ago and some of you have been members for more than six months now. So thank you so much. If you do want to become a member, there is a join button right there. If not, that's fine. You can consider subscribing uh, for more content like this. The subscribe button is over there and the like button is over there too if you found this video useful. Thank you so much, folks, and I will see you all next time.